Mass Effect is a space opera. It's one of the most powerful pieces of fiction that I've, I've seen in my lifetime. It's shot like a movie, it feels like a movie. It's like a lucid dream. And they're going to these new planets and they 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 finding different aliens and they shooting them in the ass, bam on it. You know, I'm on it, man. I like that. Mass Effect is a grand and epic sci-fi adventure game which kind of plays like 24 in space. The idea behind it is to try and make a role-playing game for people that, that helps them live that, those science fiction moments from classic movies that we all grew up with. Blade Runner. Over Star Wars. Minus Han Solo. Plus Babylon 5 meets Aliens. With Sean Cassidy to the 10th power. Yeah. You're a character in a, in a distant universe, this aspirational fantasy, allowing you to do things you could never do in real life. In Mass Effect, you are the hero. You're controlling the action, and what you do can change the outcome. Ultimately, you decide the fate of the galaxy. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. This game is awesome because you can completely customize your hero. You can be a woman, you can be a man. You can be a bald albino with no eyebrows. You can be a horrifically scarred Asian veteran. You have many choices of character, it's very exciting, and it will affect your choices in the game. The backstory gives you building blocks in which to build your character up, but the choices and how that character develops throughout this Mass Effect story really depends on you. As you play Commander Shepard, you basically encounter several people that will join up with your squad throughout the game if, if you choose to have them. It's uh, the ultimate role-playing game. It's kind of a combination of everything you've seen in role-playing games, but also in third-person shooters combined into one. We wanted to put it on a next-generation console, Xbox 360, and just push everything to the next level. You literally can just pull out a gun and just run at the enemy with guns blazing, or you can take a more subtle approach. Let's not do anything we're all going to regret. You can play it like a chess player. You can play it like, say, a Halo player. You have biotic powers that you can use where you can influence the physical world using energy attacks, lifting things, uh, sabotaging things with your mind. And then there's, you know, your gun. You can shoot aliens in the face. That's fun. Look out! You gotta, you know what I'm saying, be on your toes. You gotta take it in there. He's behind you shooting you in the ass. I'm like, man, I'm supposed to shoot you in the ass. Well, he just shot me in the ass, and my ass is on fire because the thing is like, it's hot and it's burning. And the guy, you can tell the guy's hurting, and you can, you can see a hole in his ass. And I'm like, oh, come on now. I'm joking about the hole in the ass, but. When you play the game and when you see the universe, you just want more, you want to learn more about it, and it's incredibly immersive. It feels like a, a universe that you don't want to leave. It feels like a, a universe you want to continue to adventure in. There's a galaxy and planets and side quests and all these different things. There are so many planets that you can just land on and go explore, even if you're doing nothing related to the main story of the game. It's just so huge. You're exploring the entire universe and you're making all the decisions. It's freaking sweet. <laughs> Everyone who plays the game will have a different experience, because it's not a game, it's, it's a piece of interactive fiction that shapes itself to how you want to play the game. You, human, you the one they call Shepard? Is there a problem? You are actually involved in your character's progression, and your choices shape the ending. This is an unscheduled arrival. I need your credentials. All you need to know is I have more credentials than you. You get to be the actor and the director of your own interactive fiction. Movies are very stagnant. You cannot tell, you know, yell up at the actor on the screen and say, hey, move over to the left, there's an alien coming. This is like a brand new way of, of video gaming and storytelling. It's different. It's thinking, and it's outthinking you. I think part of the fun of playing those games when we were younger is you didn't have to think that much. It's like throwing a rock through the window. But you know, now the window throws rocks back at you and it hides and turns into things. There are these interesting moral situations in the game. You know, issues of sacrifice and torture 
and all these these deep problems where there's not really a right answer. Is it okay to dispose of one person? Is it okay to dispose of a colony of people? Is it okay to dispose of hundreds of people? Is it okay to commit genocide? These are difficult questions, uh, and the answers are not obvious. All right, everybody, hang on. <laughs> It's not even a kind of a standard, just choosing good and evil kind of thing. There's like a gradient of like good and evil. If you make always the meanest, gruffest, most aggressive choice, that doesn't always get you the result that you ultimately want. That's a positive. You son of a bitch! I'll make sure everyone in the Alliance sees that. Your career is over. What we've tried to do is actually say, listen, there really is no good and evil. There's your choices and the impact that they have on the world. Typically, freedom and choice in a video game is uh, limited to whether or not you want to turn on the system or turn it off. These games are not mindless anymore. If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? Choice is the most important thing. It's about giving the player as much choice as possible across all aspects of gameplay. Most games are essentially a roller coaster, where you get in, you hang on for dear life, if you play right, you're gonna go up here and down here in the big falls and the big screams, <gasps> then you're going back down again and then it ends. With Mass Effect, it's more of a road trip, where you get in your car, you got your three or four dumb friends, and you guys are going forward and wherever you get to is gonna propel you to the next place. And some dumb decisions you make over here are gonna put you in a problem over here. Eventually, you're gonna get where you need to go, but the way it's gonna unfold is like a mystery. I think what makes a great video game story is what makes a good movie story is what makes a good novel. Um, you need great heroes faced with extraordinary circumstance and they rise to meet that because the faith of others hangs in the balance and they're not afraid to ultimately sacrifice themselves. What makes for good science fiction is a healthy blend of head game and old school storytelling. One of the original goals for Mass Effect was to make a believable science fiction story for grown-ups. The science fiction is, is really, really good in this game. We've built up this whole history of all the different races that you'll meet, all the different alien species that you'll meet. We've built in detailed character backgrounds for everybody you meet in the game. We've built up a whole political system. It's really this sort of attention to detail and the depth that make Mass Effect what it is. Before we actually set out and did the story, we wanted to create a place where you could tell a lot of stories. That was the most important thing. What really gets me in this game is the fact that you can explore the universe. It's so Star Trek-y, it's awesome. In Mass Effect, players get to enter this beautiful universe we've created, and then they get to shape it. You are Commander Shepard, you're an elite military agent with the Systems Alliance. That's hum humanity's military branch as they sort of go out and explore and expand into space. Shepard is a uh, classic hero. You are a specter. Spectres are this sort of galactic agency that is tasked with keeping peace across the galaxy through any means necessary. You know, they're sort of like the James Bonds of, of the future. In the game, humanity has just joined the intergalactic community, if you will. It's like we're just joining the Federation in Star Trek. The humans are the peons. They're the newbies. Nobody really knows what they're capable of. Nobody really likes them. And the alien races are all kind of judging you to see, you know, do we trust these guys? Are they gonna be helpful? Are they gonna be dangerous? Do we have to go to war with them? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action. You don't get to make demands of a council ambassador. So it's really up to the player to kind of decide what Commander Shepard becomes because you are the symbol of humanity as a whole. At its core, Mass Effect is all about man's fear of machines becoming too smart and becoming sentient. And I could not agree more wholeheartedly because I have a coffee pot that turns off after 30 minutes if I forget to turn it off. And that scares the out of me. 
Commander Shepard's kind of like a detective. He's a little bit like Deckard from Blade Runner because he is in pursuit of an evil artificial intelligence. We are under attack, taking heavy casualties. I repeat, heavy casualties. You're deciding where you're going to go in the galaxy and what you're going to do to try and expose the uh, rogue spe specter agent that seems to know a little bit more about this stuff than you do. Saren is a, a like a, a cat dragon with really long ears, um, and he's kind of got he's kind of got a pout. I think he's kind of got like really sad lips. He, he's like Garfield, only gray. Saren is uh, a Turian, he's an alien species, and he is basically the top Spectre agent in the galaxy. Saren is a d There, I said it. In the game, he's basically gone rogue. He's turned against everything he believes in. And as you play through the game, you start to find out there's reasons for why he's done this. Saren is, is really an anti-hero. He's not a cardboard cutout, you know, villain that I have to hate. You may disagree fundamentally with what he's trying to do, but you can sympathize with his plight. If we make ourselves useful, think how many lives can be spared. He's actually gathered a machine army. The Geth are kind of a ubiquitous enemy in Mass Effect. Overpowering artificial intelligence that are gonna come and destroy everything and have no soul. Set the charges, destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. I think it's gonna really shock players when they see what the Geth can do to human beings. In most games, you find that the vibe is the only good alien is a dead alien. But in Mass Effect, they actually put you in a situation where there's a lot of aliens that may have something to offer you. You're a bounty hunter. What do you get out of going after Saren? I'm not in this for the money. I wanna be where the action is. The most powerful moments in the game are those moments where it's not you talking to another human, it's you talking to other races about things in the galaxy and how you see things from different perspectives. You will excuse me if I don't stand up. I have no time to entertain refugees from that urban blight called Earth. There's a lot of depth here. There's more than just, you know, a blue alien. They've got this whole history and this whole culture. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. The poor bastards that made this game had to go to great lengths to ensure that they made alien races that didn't just differ in terms of how they looked, but they're actually different in the way they are culturally, the way they are with attitude, the way they are with politics and fashion sense. There's some pretty attractive looking aliens. And you know, I think we're entering an age where people are more open-minded. Uh, you know, people are saying traditional sexual roles don't necessarily have to be the way to go. And uh, Mass Effect lets you maybe explore things a little differently because let's, let's be honest, you know, alien chicks are hot. We've really tried for, for a very realistic and very hard science fiction kind of view, but we also tried to really convey the, the softer side of science fiction, the emotional side, the human side. Sorry to interrupt, Commander. Got a message from Captain Anderson. You've got all these morality situations where you're asked to make a judgment call. Too many people died here, Fist. You don't get to walk away. And uh, so much what happens afterwards is gonna be based on those series of judgment calls, much like life. Maybe you have to choose between one crew member and another, and whoever you choose is going to live, and whoever you don't choose is going to die, and you're gonna have to play the next, you know, 10 hours of the game without the presence of that character. And in a game as emotional as Mass Effect is, it's a great loss, and you'll feel it. We'll see that he receives a proper service once the mission is complete, but I need you to stay focused. Aye, aye, sir. You become so invested in the characters that you're running, you actually get emotional. You actually start feeling what your character might be feeling if it was an actual live person. Not every game lets you interact with everyone on screen. Not every game lets you interact with death. It gets you so involved on such a deep level in a video game. nerd for a second. Just walking through the ships, walking through the cities, you're just walking around just like, oh my gosh, just dumbfounded. They're huge. It is an entire world on this little disc. The technology they use today is just, uh, your jaw hits the ground. It's really a beautiful game. Building a game like Mass Effect is a major undertaking. You've got hundreds of programmers and artists, you've got millions and millions of dollars, you've got a long history of technologies that you bring in. We had well over 100 people working on it when we were in full production. 
uh, it took about four years to make. You really have to start by limiting yourself so that you can actually make some progress. The art were less for uh, actual science, the writers were quite a bit more, so there was always this combat between the two. Should we allow time travel? Should we allow um, instant space travel? How do we actually go to other planets? Because thanks to Einstein, that jerk, we, you know, we can't go faster than the speed of light. And the speed of light isn't all that fast. I mean, it's faster than my Toyota, but it's not that fast. Mass Effect is, as a metaphor, the title, but it's also kind of the, the slang term in the Mass Effect universe for dark energy. Dark energy sort of is this mysterious force. It's actually drawn from real life science news. It's an energy that pervades the universe and it causes the acceleration uh, of the expansion of the universe. Magnons, protons, electrons, that kind of stuff that you can use to harness to create what was the question again? I don't feel qualified to answer this. <laughs> Gravity acts repulsively on it. So if I had a lump of dark energy here, it would actually start inflating and it would actually create a new universe. That would be very exciting, but uh, I guess the excitement will be somewhat short-lived. <laughs> I don't really understand how Mass Effect works, but you can like warp space and time and throw people around. It powers the starships. It, is, it really powers all of the cool technology in Mass Effect. And yet, it still kind of has a hook into being plausible in real life science. The technology they use seems realistic for the setting. It doesn't seem sort of fantastic and like, oh, you know, now we have a thing that turns monkeys into ice cream. BioWare has really carved out a niche as I think probably the, the best developer in the world of role-playing games. Citadel business, we got a council specter aboard. At BioWare we've been working on this kind of game for a long time and it's been an evolution. We've finally been able to take everything we've learned from our previous games and we've really kind of pushed that to a whole other level. It's finally a next-gen game. It's taking that hardware that we've been promised and promised and promised and like really, truly utilizing it. Mass Effect is a really high-impact system and each one of the components that we use is really high fidelity. You've got all this stuff in the game. You have the exploration and the story and the action shooter and you're modding weapons and you're changing armor and yet you get inside and play the game and you don't feel like you're wrestling with any of that. It's just fun. That's really what the essence of Mass Effect is. It's, it, you always have something great to do. You know, you don't taste sugar and egg and water and milk. You taste cake. One of the things that Mass Effect does really, really well is they make the characters very believable. They sit there and they turn and they watch you walk. And you don't even have to interact with them. They're reacting to you. You say something mean to a character and they look back at you with sort of a sullen look. You know, you've done something. That, that's storytelling. You don't have to have this big, long discussion around it. You can pull in the camera really tight to take a look at the smallest emotions that on the character's faces. You don't have to have a lot of words. You can sometimes just have a tilt of a head or a raised eyebrow that really convey as much as hundreds of words can convey in other games. There's little tells that people give off, little movements of the eyes, little things that they do that actually you have to catch and that actually gives you a clue into something else. That's pretty amazing. You can actually tell when a character's lying. You can tell the way they're feeling about you. They can tell when they're nervous, when perhaps they're not happy with the decision that you made as their leader. You're like, I don't, I don't even have that much expression in my face. Virtual acting isn't anything new. You see it all the time in, in movies now, in movies like Beowulf and Pixar movies. A lot of times, something's kind of off about it, and it's almost like you're watching like an old Godzilla movie where like the guy is talking, but the, the, the words don't quite match up. The technical accomplishment that was most impressive was the head system that we came up with. Meshes for the actual shape of the face, custom animations for each of their facial gestures, dozens and dozens of sliders for things like, you know, what is the distance between the bottom of your nose and the top of your lip? Everyone seems to create a completely different character. And that's one thing that, that uh, never ceases to amaze me is how people all find their own way to play this game. We've taken some of the great voice acting talent. We have an amazing group of actors that have, that have contributed to this project. We had really impressive performances from some famous actors like Keith David and uh, Seth Green. The quality of CGI is so improved these days that, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. As long as, you know, these graphics don't replace actors altogether, which has always been the long-term fear that it could happen. Nothing that'll spoil a good video game than a shitty actor. <laughs> It's an incredible picture of what you can do if you really take your time and build it right. 
The great thing about Mass Effect is right from the start, we've we've envisioned it as a, a huge trilogy of games. The jerk that you were in the first one, or the hero that you were in the first one, is the character you're starting with in the second one. People are gonna see that choices they made in the first game will carry through the second game and even all the way into the third game. It really has taken us all of these many years to build up the amount of technology that it requires. The 360 really allowed us to build the game we wanted to build this time with photorealistic environments, photorealistic characters. The sound, the, the, the graphic quality, I mean, we pushed it pretty hard. It's dedicated to that HDTV experience, which gives you really high definition visuals. It is the game that everybody wants it to be. If games are this hot right now, I'm excited about maybe by the time that I'm 50, you could almost be in something like the holodeck and you could play this game and get lost in the game and play it for days and days and really feel like you're in the middle of it. You have been given a great gift, the experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. I think a lot of people are gonna play this game not once, but three, four times just to see how things would have gone differently. You can change it every time you play. It's like a brand new game every time. This is a thousand games in one game. I think we've taken all these elements and combined them to really make an experience that is really the pinnacle of, of interactive storytelling and immersion in gameplay. I can't wait till people play this game and play through it so I can talk to them about what they did in the game and also what the choices were that they made. I, I could see this game sucking up part of my life. <laughs> So if I don't make any movies for the next couple of years, you'll know why. Lost in space.